This is the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Celebrity Talk Show Series. And we are so honored and so excited to be welcoming back a music legend, an iconic singer and vocalist, the original Black Bombshell herself, Holly V. Maxwell, is returning for a return visit for more of our famous JMS Lovity. As she always says, love is. She's back with us. For this episode of the Gym Master Show Live, coming to us live and direct from Chicago, Illinois. We're so excited. She's all pumped up. She uh, she actually wanted to return. She says she likes the vibe of the show. She likes what we're doing here. She was with us uh, not that long ago, maybe about two years ago. And uh, she said, "It's I need my levity, Phil. I got to get back on the Gym Master Show. I have so much to share, so much to say. And uh, I love the vibe and I love what you're doing, Jim. And I love all the lovely viewers who watch from around the world, which I think is so cool. You know, uh, she is a legend. She's a very busy person. She's been doing this work for a long time as an extraordinary American treasure and vocalist. And uh, we're honored to have her here again. Holly V. Maxwell is back with us here on the show. If you guys want to comment while the show is live, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. It doesn't cost anything. And click the notification bell icon so you never miss any of the episodes as they're happening. And uh, you can comment in the Jameis Lovety chat room, as we call it. We've got a Lovety chat room that is open and available for you uh, while the show is live. You can also always comment when the show isn't live as well or at any time in the comment section. You can drop a comment in the comment section below all of the episodes of our ongoing series. Good to have you with us. Hope you guys are having a great day. Start to your week as we're kicking off another week together. Hundreds of episodes we've done of our incredible series. We're so excited to have Holly the here. Now you may remember the last time that she was here, we had an amazing time. When you mentioned the name Holly the Maxwell, you have mentioned a name that is respected all over the world. She is the entertainer's entertainer and is better than ever she's ever been before musically. She's done it all, traveled the world, and knows everybody that is somebody and is equally well known by those same somebodies. <laughs> everybody loves somebody sometime. Exactly. Holly Maxwell was born Holly V. Marclaro de Maxwell. She is now Holly V. Maxwell. She sang her first song professionally at the age of five years young, unlike many other artists. She gives all due respect and credit to a higher spiritual power for creating her parents. Yes, I think that's really, really beautiful. Her main inspiration to start the music, classical piano and singing opera as well. She learned to sing in German, French, and Italian. To this date, Holly V is the only American of African descent to have been presented in concert at the age of 12 years young at Chicago's Lyric Opera House. She was presented by noteworthy Reverend Dr. Lena McLean and her mother, Eula V. I think that is absolutely beautiful. Holly V holds two master's degrees in music, one from the Roosevelt University, Chicago Musical College, Chicago, Illinois, and the other from the world-class Juilliard School of Music in New York City. Holly V was the first and only singer to perform a live show in flight aboard a 747 TWA jet from Chicago to Costa del Sol, Spain in 1972 to sing for President Franco. During her long-term relocation to Los Angeles through the 1970s and 80s, Holly Lee replaced Tina Turner with a legendary Ike Turner Review and was the only vocalist that toured with the great jazz organist Jimmy Smith, with whom she worked for years. She went on to reside in Paris, France for over a decade, eventually establishing the Maxwell Cafe. She currently resides in Chicago. She has also shared the stage with the Dells, the Temptations, the Spinners, King Curtis, Captain and Tennille, legendary comedian and actor Slappy White and Red Fox, as well as Oscar award-winning actor Louis Gossett Jr. and too many more to mention, but maybe she'll mention them for us during the show. Again, she truly is a, a beloved American treasure. She uh, knocks it out of the park when she performs. As you can see, she gives it 110%. Her uh, style and her look is always on fire. It's always ever changing. She changes with the times. She keeps fresh. She keeps updated, and I think that's really cool. These are some of the more recent shots, but look at this. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can see why she was called the original black bombshell. And you know what? Still is to this day. Um, beautiful soul inside and out. So she wanted to come back on the show, Lovities. Uh, she wanted to see us all. She wanted to say hi. She loves this whole vibe we've got here, which is very special and different at the Gym Masters show live series. Why don't we put our hands together and um, join together in welcoming the incredible Holly Lee Maxwell back to the Gym Masters show live. Some more great conversation coming our way. Updates. And of course, love it. Holly Lee, welcome back to the show, my friend. How are you? Oh, I am just great, just wonderful, excited, and just love you to death. <laughs> uh, right back at you. Right back at you. <laughs> How have you been since we chatted last? Spreading oh, the my love God. is. I have been fabulous. I have oh, been fabulous. Great. I have been uh, exhilarated. I have been, oh, my God. I just... You know, uh, uh, God has blessed me so much and so immensely, and I am just so grateful and so thankful that all the stuff that I've done in my life has brought me to this point to keep doing some more stuff, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, my tired is tired, Jim. The tired <laughs> is tired, right? Exactly. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to keep right on because I got some more stuff to do. Oh, yes, you do have a lot. Yes, you have a lot of incredible things that are up your sleeve that I know you're going to tell us about some of it as well. But uh, so life's good. I mean, since we chatted last, of course, it's been a little crazy. Life's been crazy. There's been a lot of changes. Uh, we had this pandemic situation. It sort of closed everything, stopped everything. And it gave us pause, time to sort of... Uh, Take a look at our lives, where we've been, what we want to do, where we want to go, how we want to be. Like I say, you know, I, I started this series playing off my television and radio and stage and film background to bring us together and share all this, uh, you know, great entertainment and conversations, but some of this lovity. And I know for you, love is, is like not only branding for you, but it's really who you are inside, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, Jim. You know, I, uh, I know that, uh, I mean, I know this is not something I believe is something that I know that when you can forgive and you can love people, you, you may not get the love back from whoever it is you love it, but trust me, you will be loved and you will have a, a, a great, a vast amount of success. If you just keep loving, don't you don't let anything uh, make you bitter. You don't allow any negativity. You see the good and the and 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 the the love in everybody. Now everybody's not going to be like that to you, but that ain't that's their problem. <laughs> <You see? laughs> that's their problem because yes. it's problematic anyway. You understand? Exactly right. Yeah, but but. <laughs> but Love is, that's the only thing that really exists in my life. Yes. And that is what I look for from others. If, 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 and, and, and this is, this might sound a little selfish. I don't know. But when you can't give me the love and the respect that I give you. Yes. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go. go I on. like that. Yes. Yeah. That's the way to be, right? You have to yes. do that. Yes. I mean, because yes. you got to cut the slack because yes. uh, sometimes, you know, it gets to be, you can be dragged down uh, by toxic negative energy, right? Yeah. Well, you know what? I find that uh, we as human beings, we, we allow so much negative to happen to us. We don't, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stay in a situation that's not good for us, you mm -hmm. know, but when staying in that situation is not good for us, you're not strong enough to make it good for you. So you need to get strong enough just to walk away, at least do that. Yes. But if you're not strong enough to turn that situation around where it works for you, get the strength to walk away. 
sometimes it's uh it's easier said than done, right? How do you yes. do it? How do you yes. actually yes. get the gumption to follow well, through back with to, it? Back to that self-love. See, back to that self-love. You have to love yourself. You have to risk being called selfish. You have to risk being called, uh, you don't care nothing about nobody but yourself. You have to be risk. You have to risk all of that. And once you are willing to defend and risk that for yourself, trust me, you have the strength of an elephant to walk away or either turn it around. It's going to be one of the two. Mm -hmm. All right. It's going to be one of the two, but it starts with that self-love. It starts with that self-love. Exactly. Because yes, yes, in order to love others, you have to love yourself, right? Yes. Yes, you do. And I love myself so much. I don't think it's no room. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what? You want to love me? You better squeeze on in here. <laughs> That's it, right? <laughs> oh, Lord, Embers. <laughs> Holly, the squeeze me, Maxwell. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Squeeze me, tease yeah, me, please me. <laughs> <laughs> so your parents really were very important and inspirational and influential for you in those early years, right? Tell us about them and tell us about those those early years uh, well, for you. Well, my mom. And look at this cutie know, here. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> look at that. There's Holly V. Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just want to squeeze her now? Oh, look I just want to take it and just hold her close and there tight. <laughs> she is as just 10, like 10 months old here, I think, yes. right? Yes. Wow. Yes. And yes. look, yes, yeah, look at your expression, you know, I love yeah, it. Yeah, my expression, you know what I'm looking and saying, okay, y'all, get ready. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, you're, you're, you're look, you've got the look on your face saying, okay, now this gig you're telling me about pays how much? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and oh look my. here. That's my oh, mom. Beautiful, huh? Yep, that's my mama. And very, very important uh, in your life. Tell us about, yeah. you know, yes. those early years and, and the importance of, she was, of family. He was, she was an exceptional person back then for a black mother. And I stipulated, because this is black history, so I'm going to tell you this history, child. Anyway, she was exceptional for a black woman back then because my mother sang opera. Mm -hmm. And uh, she would... She would go to see, she did concerts. She did, uh, uh, what do you call them? Oh, well, back then we called them uh, teas yeah. and, and uh, oh, functions, some uh, musical yeah. functions, musical mm -hmm. events functions. Like recitals. Yeah, and, recitals. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And she did all that kind of stuff. And when she discovered, that I could sing at the age of five years old. Well, we just, she just took me and just ran. I was in the wind. <laughs> that was dead. Yeah, I was in she, the wind. She, she was gone. <laughs> she said, you gotta, yeah, we gotta, that's, so she heard, she realized the, the talent early on, huh? Yeah, well, when she used to sing this song, she used to sit at the piano. You know, like the one in the background. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which you would play, but you, you're waiting for the guy to come and tune it. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for him to tune this up, right? You know, I need a tune-up, baby. That's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she would be at the piano singing, and she would sing this song, uh, The Lord's Prayer by Malat, that was written by Malat. And when she get to the part that she would say, and into temptation, I come out the room and say, it is the damn Sean. Every time she got that part, I don't care where I was, I'd come through the house talking about end of the redemption. Yes. And that's what made her pay attention mm. that I could sing or wanted to sing or something. I was I was I was uh musically talented. That that gave her 
And the next thing I know, we was off to the races. My mother did not waste any time. Not at all, huh? Not, no, she didn't waste any time. She took me to Roosevelt University when I was six. Ooh. And they told her, they told her, she's too young. <laughs> she's too young. Bring her back down here. When she get about nine or ten, do you know my mama was right there when I hit that nine years old? Oh boy, he was right down there, You're nine right years old, there. and that's where I studied boy. That's where my first voice lesson and piano lesson started with Roosevelt, with the Chicago Musical College at the Roosevelt University. Yep, and we used to sometimes had to walk because we didn't have car fare. You did, huh? You did yes, the actual yes, walk, yes, and how yes. long was that walk? Well. If you know anything about Chicago, let's just take it from, uh, say, 56th Street and Prairie to 412 South Michigan. That's how that's that's that's, that's a how, hike. Yeah, that is a hike. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's when I was like 9, 10, 11. Mm. And then I got a little older and we moved a little further. And sometimes we didn't have car fare again. Right. And but we walked and we made those half the half an hour piano lessons and half an hour voice lessons. That's incredible. That's yeah. and and yeah. what did you learn doing you know doing that? What did you learn about yourself? Certain uh, tenacity and strength and resilience. I, huh? I learned I learned how much discipline I have. Right. Uh I learned that that I knew I could sing. Mm -hmm. Jim, I knew I could sing and was nothing going to turn me or stop me or influence me not to sing. That's what I had. And I knew that's what God gave me. And I was going to do that as long as I live. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did for seven decades. That's incredible when you say that, huh? The seven decades. I mean, that decades. that went by in a New York minute, huh? <laughs> yes, yeah, seven Jeez. decades. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, 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 I showed this fabulous shot earlier. This is fantastic. When was this? That was in 1969. Wow. That wow. was uh that was my mom made that dress. Did she really? Oh, my mother was fabulous. She yeah. was, oh, I'm telling you, she was extraordinary. Yeah. Yes, she made all of my stage clothes, all of my street clothes. Uh, I was lucky enough in the 60s to marry a man who was a, a, a hairstylist. Mm. And he, he did that hair. He started me to wearing the blonde hair. Mm. I married him in 66. That picture was taken in 69. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Really, it is. Uh, it's like you're a flower and you're the bloom from the petals. You know yeah. what I mean? Doesn't it yeah, have that yeah. sort of look? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my mom, like I told you, she was incredible. She was, you know, right, creative. Right now today, I miss her. I miss her. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. And uh, she she was so instrumental in in the. Uh, Oh, wow. And I mean, everything she wanted me, the only thing she didn't want me to take up is dancing. She ah, said she didn't want no. me to end up being a hoofer, a hooper, a hooper. <laughs> uh, a hooper. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> she said she didn't want me being a hoofer. That's an old, that's an old school word, huh? <laughs> Ain't that old school word? <laughs> <laughs> if uh, anybody doesn't know what that is just today all you have to do is google it <laughs> that's right just google it y'all you I might not know that. how to spell it just that's google right it. Yeah. Don't, just talk into your phone h-o-o-f-e-r a hoofa ask siri what it is she'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> that is funny <laughs> yeah but uh, she was and my see my dad was now my dad was the opposite my dad, <laughs> he wanted me to no don't sing. Go and be a lawyer, cause you're smart as hell. That's what he used to tell me. I said, but daddy, I can sing. He said, yeah, but just in case that don't work out, you go to school. And my father was instrumental in me becoming a, and this is the truth. He is instrumental in me becoming a court reporter. And I also yeah. 
was an IBM programmer teacher. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, guess what? But I ain't like none of that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't like none of that. And when they when they made me a teacher of uh, Jim, this is the truth. They made me an IBM program card punch teacher, right? Yeah. I quit it for four days. <laughs> and you, the, you, you you put instead of punching in, you punched out. I punched out. <laughs> and you know why? This is the truth. They these the students kept asking me the same dumb question. I just couldn't take it. I, <laughs> I same explained things, this yeah. already. Why are you asking me the same thing a different way? Because it's gonna be the same answer. I, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. I had to get yeah. out of there. I, I punched out. <laughs> <laughs> For good. <laughs> yep. 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 So what yep. happened from there? What was next for you? Well, um, I just kept singing. Uh, my mom kept taking me to different things. In fact, I won scholarships to go to school singing. Uh, different organizations would put me in competition for their organization, and I won all of them. And that's how that's how I paid for my college and my musical career in college. Wow. Yeah, got wow. singing for different organizations and winning different competitions. You know, back then they had, they had, you know, I was a debutante. That's the old word, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was a debutante and uh, uh, I was with Joe Lewis's daughter, the mm. boxer. Oh, I with, yeah. Yeah, I was with a princess. Oh, I forget her name. But anyway, I was, I was, my mom kept me in the right, around the right people right people yes. joe lewis uh my father's hero my father's uh yeah i asked my father you know of all the people through the years who would be like a hero of yours yes. my father has always said joe lewis yes. because of the kind of person that he was the gentleman yes. that he was and the yes. fact that it was you know america versus uh what was happening in germany and Max Schmeling and all of that. And uh, so it was, yeah, it's such a, a class act, Joe Lewis, huh? Oh yeah, well, you know what? Uh, a little more of my history, uh, my uncle, whose name was Clarence Brown, and he fought for the CYO here. And he was called Chicago's Brown Bomber. He knocked Joe Lewis out. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. What a yeah, story, I mean, huh? Yeah, yeah, that was my uncle. And you know, I wish you could see it, uh, Jim. I got a book that sits on the floor. It sits if you sit the book straight up on the floor, not flat on the floor, but straight up on the floor. It's about three feet tall and it's got to be about uh six inches wide with nothing but the fighters mm. from 1936 until having a picture with me and Muhammad Ali in it. That's incredible. Yeah. And my parents uh, were yes, on their God. they were on their honeymoon and uh yeah. and somehow they ended up on on their honeymoon they uh they ended up being invited to the hotel where Sonny Liston was staying. They got a chance okay. to meet Sonny Liston. Remember Sonny Liston? Yes, I remember him. Yes, yes. he was he was a giant yeah. at that time, another iconic figure of that time, huh? Oh yeah, and and uh I was in the company of and you know I'm just giving you the stuff that people don't know about me that right. they were singing. But uh I was I was uh, uh I sang for Archie Moore's wedding, the boxer. And he knew about my uncle. And a lot of them knew about my uncle, whereas a lot of people didn't know about and didn't know he was my uncle until I went to opening my mouth and singing, you see? <laughs> and, the, and that was the giveaway. Yeah. That, that yeah. was, yeah. One, uh, I, I remember Muhammad Ali said, yeah, her, her, her uncle can fight and, 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 she, and she can fight singing. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Hey. I mentioned, too, that you, the only... 
Af American of African descent to have been presented in concert at the age of 12 at right. the Chicago's Lyric Opera House, presented okay. by noteworthy Reverend Dr. Lena McLean and your mother as well. Absolutely. What was that like, 12 years old, to have that you, honor? You know what? Let me tell you I, something I didn't tell you, okay? And, you know, I'm, I'm writing my last book. You are? Yeah, it's called All Kinds of Rape. Mm. From opera to the blues. Wow. And this little segment is in the book. Um, that night, uh, that Saturday night before the the concert, uh, my mom had to shoot my stepdaddy in self-defense because he had raped me. And so that Sunday the next day, my mom was behind the curtain in handcuffs. And I went on and sang my German, my French, and my Italian. But Jim, I had tears in my eyes because and nobody knew what the hell was going on. And, uh, uh, but I was standing on stage, and some of the uh, professors from Europe that came over to hear me to take me back to Europe to study, they didn't understand why I'm standing on stage cr crying and singing. Well, that's what stopped the opera. That's honest to God. That's what's that's that's a true story. That's amazing, that's huh? I, yeah, it changed. Yeah, that changed. My mom back in handcuffs and the tragedy, you see, the 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 trauma and the tragedy of that whole situation is what stopped me from, I guess, being one of the great opera singers. To going that. into opera, right? It was yes. something that was scarring. Yes. Yes. And uh, you remembered well, exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. And I, so I kept singing. Incredible. I, yeah, I kept singing to finish paying for school, you mm -hmm. know, scholarships and stuff. And uh, uh, but uh, I changed my music in, in one of one of the, I think it was in St. Louis at the Keel Auditorium. I. Uh, I was supposed to sing Um Beldia from Madame Butterfly. And right in the middle of all that, I just changed the music, sat down, played the piano, and started singing Impossible by Gloria Lynn. Mm. <laughs> and you know, I still won. You still won? I still won. Wow. I still won the scholarship. Yeah. Mm. But that was the end of it. I I I I, I was through. I was through and and then I started going into jazz. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Tell us, a, well, you hold two master's degrees in music, one from Roosevelt University, Chicago Musical College, yes. and then from Juilliard School yes. of Music as well. Yes. That's incredible, huh? Yeah. Well, you know what? I knew I could sing in those, you know, between the education and the music, I was finding my way, Jim. You're finding your way. I was right. finding my way. And I knew I wasn't ready to to go into clubs and all of that. But I was like in a limbo. So the only thing I knew was keep going to school. Yes. You see, just keep going to school. And that's how come I ended up with the two degrees. I just kept going to school. I didn't, I only needed the one, but I didn't know, I didn't know where I was, you know, behind the the opera and the tragedy and all of that. And I, all I knew is I could sing. And the other thing was I knew keep going to school. And that's what I did. Keep going to school. And then you said you really started to enter the uh, jazz world. But the other thing, too, that I think is really amazing, the first and only singer to perform a live show in flight aboard a 747 TWA jet going from Chicago to Costa del Sol, Spain in 1972 to actually sing for President Franco. Let yes. us know about that. What a story that is. You know that, yeah, that's a story. That is a story. I uh, I had no idea what a great story that was. I was just singing back to what I told you. I knew I could sing. I just sang everywhere. It didn't make no difference. Just say, you know, but I found out that that was later on. I found out that that was a hell of an achievement mm -hmm. because nobody else has done that. No. On a 747. I mean, a live show in the air. <laughs> Nobody else has done that, honey. No. Today, you're lucky if you even get pretzels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> and here she's putting on a whole show. And like, <laughs> oh, yeah, jumping up and down on the plane. Those people like, were loving when that. I stopped jumping up and down. I said, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the plane. <laughs> I said, I hope I don't help take this plane down. Let me sit down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then you sing for the president, President, yeah, Franco. president Franco. Yes. I mean, what was that? Was a that was an honor. Yeah, yes, it was. You know, I've got the newspaper clippings here, and um, that's a good opening to tell you that I'm working on my life story documentary now. In oh, film. you are. Yeah, I'm working. I've been working on this uh, uh, gym for about four or five years. Mm -hmm. You know, just bits and clips until, you know, till you get it all together. Right. In, in fact, I've got another, uh, I've got another sitting, another sitting to film. Uh, this Thursday, is it this Thursday or next Thursday? Anyway, one of these, this Thursday, next Thursday. Coming soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, coming soon, yeah, coming soon, and uh, it's it's going to be named the same thing as the book, all kinds of rape from opera to the blues. Wow! So I'm trying to get both of those out at the same time, around the yeah. same time, around the same time. You know, yeah, the book. You know, like I don't know which one is coming first, but you know what I mean. You know, yes, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we'll keep tuned for that. There was a, and of course, uh, there's some of our viewers who are saying hello, all the loveties as well, welcoming you. They um, have mentioned loving this book as well, Free Basing Free. Tell us about this one for folks who aren't familiar with this book yet and need to get out and grab it. Well, Free Basing Free is the true story about how Ike Turner really was. Uh, he was given a dirty deal. He was lied on. And, you know, Hollywood makes everything so uh, sensational. You know what I'm saying? Dramatic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is the true story. Ike wasn't like that. Ike wasn't what they said. Uh, I, I, I'm going to be, I'm, you know, I, I'm going to be totally honest with this because I'm very, 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 very upset. And I will be upset until I get the chance to tell the truth about how the guy was. He was not like that to me. He was not like, Ike was not like that to me. He was not like that kind of person that they depicted. Okay. Uh, Jim, when, 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 when you are tunnel vision, you are totally tunnel vision. All you see is music, music, music. As long as I wanted to sing and needed to sing, that's how he and I got along. I was not trying to be his girlfriend. I was not trying to be his woman. And because of that, we became partners in crime and I became one of his true and loyal confidants. You understand? Yeah. I could tell me anything and it was ride or die, pal. You hear me? Yeah. And I use that word very, very, very carefully because he was one of the people in my life that I know and that I can relate to that was treated wrongly. So my, my, uh, my logic and my feelings all mixed up in there together with him was ride or die. And that's what I did because he got a dirty deal. Let me tell you something, uh, Jim. When you got when you got something on your mind, and you a tunnel vision, guess what? You ain't looking to the right. You ain't looking to the left. You just looking straight ahead because you got a goal that you have uh, focused on. Right? Mm -hmm. You can't see dumb stuff coming at you. You see, you're not into that psychologically. Your head is not into that. So you look up and you in a world of trouble. I didn't know Tina like to get beat up. Yeah, I'm going to pause right there. And by the time he knew it, it was too late. She was his bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And she used it against him. And that is the truth. 
And that's what that book is about. That book's been so well received, huh? Everybody that has read it and, and has continues to read it has been like Eagle Eye watching. Welcome, Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye says, I read the book. It was so good. I couldn't put it down. <laughs> yeah, that's what that that's what they tell me. Uh, I had one woman say, I would use it in a part too. <laughs> they want the rest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so that's another reason I'm writing this. This is my last book. Uh, because it's going to touch on this, it's going to touch on that, this here and the other and to another. That's it's going to. I mean, the whole thing. I'm telling on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so by if anybody then, watching is thinking then, about, I'll be ninety and don't uh, care. <laughs> I was going to say, if anybody watching uh, knows the stories and you're thinking about moving out of state and changing your name, this might be the time to do it. <laughs> Because she's got pen and paper and she's Baby, on fire. I, I'm ready. <laughs> she is bursting at the seams. She is, her pot is boiling. <laughs> that is funny. Well, as it went during the long term relocation to LA through the 70s and 80s, you replaced Tina with the legendary Ike Turner, and you were the only vocalist also, in addition to the time, you know, with uh, Ike Turner. You toured with the great jazz organist, Jimmy Smith, with whom you worked for many years. Tell us about that. That was another great opportunity. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, have to I have to tell you how, you know, I got, I ended up getting hired by Ike and Jimmy the same day, same month, same year. Would you believe that? Mm. And I was singing jazz one minute and rock and roll next. I was sitting up with my hands like I'm singing classical music, right? And then the next couple of weeks, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? I, I said to myself, how in the hell did I do all of that? <laughs> Incredible, huh? Energy. Yeah, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, this what this this thing here, Jimmy Smith. 1978, South Africa. 78. That was in uh, South Africa. We were in South Africa. And I he was he was incredible. He was an incredible talent. This man was he was awesome. I I, I after him, I sang with Shirley Scott, I sang with Jack McDuff, I sang with Charlie Erlin. I sang with Jimmy McGriff, but guess what? They could not touch him. No mm -hmm. way could they touch that man right there. And that's the truth. Yeah, I see you have pictures of Kenny Dixon. He was an awesome drummer. And uh, Ray, the guitarist. And that's me in the middle, y'all. Yeah. And yeah. And, Ray uh, Crawford, yeah. Ray Crawford, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, we we all made a hell of a combination. It was It was... What'd you say? A match made in heaven? Yes. Yes. It was a match made in heaven. That is so amazing, huh? Yeah. 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 We were uh, in Africa. We, we wouldn't work. We didn't, uh, we didn't play until they integrated the theater over there. That Coliseum, that's where we were. Oh, and uh, okay. yeah. And, and they didn't want to integrate the, 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 the theater. So we wouldn't go on. And look at that headline, huh? Yeah, Holly is a reincarnation of Billy and Ella. So, you know, I was jazzing it, wasn't I? <laughs> yes, you sure, yeah. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was into it, honey. Absolutely. That's a great yeah. piece there on so many different levels. Look at this one, too. This is 1965. Cover. Yeah, that, that, was was, uh, that was uh, in all the hotels. When you go to a hotel room, those books were, you know, welcome. In the hotel, they was all over Chicago, North Side, downtown, uptown, all around, telling you where to go. And I was on the cover. Mm, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you still tell people where to go? <laughs> you know it, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I tell him in a minute, baby. In a minute, in a New York minute. This is cool too, huh? Yes, yeah. That was done by 
uh, I can't remember who did who did that piece, but uh, they were telling some some truth about the fact of me not ever being a, a, a Whitney Houston, mm. and and the reason why that happened because I ain't gonna lay down on nobody's couch. Make a long story short, mm. that was quick, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, that was that was quick. That almost passed by you, didn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was that went by fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there you are again. Look at that, huh? Yep. Isn't now my cool? mama made that little dress. Did she? Yep. She oh, really she was. Kept, baby, she kept me cute. I was. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it started, right? Yes. Yep. Mm. Look at this. Yep. Seal Johnson. Wow. Golden Peacock. And the Golden Peacock. Lord, that was in 1902. 1902? Yeah. <laughs> 1902. <laughs> 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 oh, man. <laughs> wow. That must have been something, 1902. Oh, baby. I've been there, come back again. I was going to say, we're, we're talking to the ghost of Holly Lee Maxwell right now. That's why her image is moving behind her. That's right. Ooh. Ooh, that is funny. Here's this too as well, huh? Yep. Yeah. Uh, the High Chaparral, yeah, that was... Oh, that was a great big old club, Jim. That club almost a thousand people. Really? Yeah, it's it, it's at close. It seated close to a thousand people. It was a, a very people. big place. Yes, that's incredible. Yeah, and of course, look at this. We dug this wow. up too, huh? Wow. Never love again. Yes, yes. I, you know what? I love that song. Uh, um, Norman. Norman Harris was the writer of that song. He could write some beautiful music. He really yes, could. Yes, I know. Yeah. Really fantastic. Look at this photo. That's me and my mom. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. What is she, made, she made that dress. Was this in the 70s? That was in the 80s. It was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. mm. She made that dress. She made the dress she got on. Really nice. Yep, that's my mama. I love it. She's pretty too, wasn't she? Yes. Yeah. Joyce, Joyce Parker says the interview is hot with <laughs> Maxwell Hart's coffee, Holly V. She's off the chain. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joyce Parker. Welcome to the show. You're now a gym master show. Love it. -y. We love having you here. And uh, yeah, I would say it, it's always hot when. Uh, Holly stops by JMS Live. Absolutely. That's what she said. She needed her lovely fix. She says, Jim, get me back in there. That's so we, right. We That's got her right. back on here. You, uh, you know what? I told you when 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 you loved back, when you yes. love people and you loved back, you don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose that. Exactly no, you, right. No, no. Kathleen in New York said, when did you change Holly with the Y to Holly with the E and Y. And then Merlin said, when did you change the name as well? Some of maybe behind the scenes of the, of the well, name. I, I, I changed the name uh, because, well, number one, I changed the name um, after I started getting into the blues. Uh, all the, all the time I was doing uh, R and B and jazz it was H-O-L-L-Y. And the reason why I changed it to H-O-L-L-Y in the first place is because before the H-O-L-L-Y, I was using H-O-L-L-E, but everybody was calling me ho. So, so, <laughs> it's, it's so, <laughs> and it's calling me holy, it's calling me holy, holy. They couldn't get that, they couldn't get that together. So I just <laughs> the wild there and that made it simple for everybody and then after after being out there after being out there so long i said 
I'm going back to my real name, H O L L E. <laughs> and that's it's actually Halle. You know, with the slash over the E? Yes. Actually, right. it's Halle. Halle Z. McLaren Day Maxwell. That's my, that's on my birth certificate, y'all. That's my name. That's it. And then the V. Yeah. Holly D. Yeah. That's, my, that's my mama's name. Eula V. Yes. I told I you we that. I told you we weird, didn't I? No. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Who names their daughter V? <laughs> <laughs> they do when that daughter's very special. Uh, yeah. V. Yeah. yeah. V. v. Yeah. Not the, the. Not the, the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the double E, absolutely. Yeah, I, great I, I always said if I ever got a TV show, I was going to say Holly V, and you call me what you want to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just don't call me whole. <laughs> Just don't call me whole. <laughs> Boy, they, they wrote me out with that one at first. I'm sure they did. Oh, so I just that's look it. at this yeah. shot here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. What would you say to that young lady there today? The one I'm looking at right now. Yeah. I would say that you are an amazing spirit. And I'm so glad that you didn't waste your mother's time and make her work in vain. Mm. That's what I would say. If she really worked hard to make sure that you were taken care of and the yes, opportunities yeah, yeah, yes, came did, your way, right? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. That woman was she was Old. powerful. Yes, yeah. She was powerful. Yeah. You know? That's beautiful to have that. Not everybody has that kind of support system, you mm -hmm. know? No. So, so to have that is, is... I, 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 I really wish I had it now. I don't have it now. Everything that I do now is is going just off of sheer guts and sheer determination and sheer. Well, let me see what I'm gonna do now. No, let me let, let me do this. Let me do. This. It's it's not like I have anyone a gym that inspires me. Okay, other than the inspiration that I get from, from God. And that's, mm, mm, yeah, that's the truth. That's my inspiration. Faith is very important to you. Yes, 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 it is. And, and I know that he made me a special human being. So I'm not going to fail him either. Simple mm -hmm. as that. Yes. That's what keeps me going. That's honest to God. That's what keeps me going. Um, for folks watching, following along, has gospel been a part of your world too? You know, not so much. You know, I'm not going to lie, not so much. I that opera mm. took away every uh, whatever raw, whatever raw musical talent that I had. The opera refined it. You yeah. Understand? Yeah. So therefore, I I couldn't sing gospel music. Would you believe that? I couldn't sing mm. it. Mm. I didn't have I didn't have the sound for it. Right. Yeah. So your voice is so yeah, it's very bold and it's yeah, it's got this um, yeah, I didn't have, earthiness I didn't, to it and yeah. Yeah, and I would cross my T's and dot my eyes. See. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't say oh, where you been going. I would say where have where are you going? Uh, <laughs> you see, it was it, it's a different, it was different for me. It's the versus the. Right. Yeah, you got it. There you go. I that's, like that. The versus the. That's, that's right. The versus the. That's that's yeah. really what it is. And the Juilliard yes. training and everything else. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and coming, like you say, from that opera world. Can you imagine when I was a kid? This is true. I used to cuss people out in Italian. <laughs> and they used to look at Did me like you? I'm crazy. <laughs> they looked at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> And then they wanted you to teach them the word. <laughs> no, they wanted to, they wanted to whoop my butt. That's what they wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try that also in German? And yeah, oh in, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y'all always want to get beat up. <laughs> you, you learned. You learned it all. <laughs> you know. You remember that 
<laughs> you remember that thing that that little saying that you said with the guy you said what you talking about willis so that's what he yes <laughs> yes different strokes yeah, yeah they'd be looking what at me saying, well, what, what you talking about holly <laughs> what you talking about holly <laughs> Nobody oh, said what God. you're talking about, Hall, did they? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> you know, laughter is very important in life, right? There's a lot of people walking around very maudlin and they, they have no sense of humor. They don't laugh. They don't see the humor in anything. You have to laugh. You have to release, feel good endorphins, laughter. Find the funny and the crazy of life, right? As long as I live, I'm going to keep laughing. And if you can't make me laugh, you can just go on somewhere else. (laughs) You can punch out. (laughs) Just punch out. Take your card and exit. Seriously, I'm not in, I'm not into being depressed. I, I, I have been depressed and didn't know I was depressed. That happens, and I found yes. that, uh, yeah, I found that out the hard way. You know how I found that out? When when I had to have an operation on my throat. Of all things. And I couldn't sing. That, now I found that I'm depressed. Ain't that something? <laughs> yeah, because that's your instrument. That's your tool. That's, that's right. That's yeah. right. And when, when I had the operation on my throat, Baby, that, let me tell you something, and I and I've told people this, and I'm not ashamed of it. It's going to be in the book. I thought I was going crazy, so I went inside myself on the fourth floor in in the psych ward because I thought I was going crazy, uh, uh Jim. Yeah, and sure. found out wasn't nothing wrong with me. I was just depressed because I had an operation on my throat. That's what that found out. That's what it was. Right, exactly. But can you imagine me sitting? I'm up there, and this girl was talking to about three people. Wasn't nobody sitting there but her. <laughs> and then her friend sitting next to her, she knew all of them's name. <laughs> she, she <won't. laughs> I said, Lord, what have I done to myself now? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'm up here with all these crazy people. <laughs> all these crazy, it's like a soap opera, your own little mini soap opera with all these cast of characters. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't believe guess what they oh, they didn't keep me I, that was there for me they they yeah yeah they so said ain't nothing, uh, ain't nothing wrong with you just depressed you just yeah <laughs> i said oh, oh, oh okay well, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> just keep going right just right. keep going that's and, it and that's what you've done look at this shot here yeah mm. fred williamson yeah he used you know he used to live in gary <sighs> And oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I knew him, but I didn't know him. I didn't know who he was until after he became Fred Williamson. That's what yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people came out of Gary, Indiana. The Jacksons yeah. came out of there, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. My my husband used to do their mother's hair in the kitchen. You know, for the Jacksons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Lou Gossett Jr. Yep. Yep. Now that was another buddy. That was my buddy. Yeah. You know, I'm always friends. I, I make a, a, a man a good friend, woman. I don't know about being his girlfriend, but I know I make a man I, a I good know. friend, woman. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody's taking notes. <laughs> she makes a man a good friend, woman. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, that's cool. I do. Yes, I do. yeah, yeah. Especially men that that uh, that are intelligent. They, right, they, uh, Jim. They have to be intelligent. They have to be intelligent with me. Yes, you know, exactly. and and I can get along with that. You know. Yes, but, but anything else other than that, I can't get along with that. I'm not. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, it's that. It's a, no, to talk about Willis. <laughs> no, mm-mm. no, no. I ain't, I'm 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 not trying to. Mm-mm. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. But I anyway, sure do. there's a great shot. Yeah, that's some uh, me and Gene Chandler. Mm. You know, Gene Chandler had that song Rainbow. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Another great classic, right? Well, yeah, the Duke of Earl. Everybody knows him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Duke of Earl. Yeah. Another fantastic one. 
That's really yeah. cool. Look at this shot. That's mom and my daddy. That's beautiful, huh? Yep. Tell us about your dad. My dad was, you know what? My dad was, he graduated from Tuskegee Institute. And back then, that's, that, that was unusual. You know, like my mama graduated from Northwestern. Don't ask me how they got together because he was from Alabama and she was born in South Carolina. But Northwestern uh, University was is in uh, Evanston, Illinois. And that's where she graduated. But anyway, my father, he was a very, very, oh, you talking about discipline. Mm. He was a highly disciplined, highly intelligent man. And I never will forget as long as I live, Jim, uh, he would he would browbeat me to keep going to school, keep going mm. to school. Uh, singing is okay. This way he used to talk. Singing's okay, but uh, you got to get an education. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do uh, in case anything falls through. Because you can't rely on singing. You have to have some degrees and, <laughs> and some masters mm -hmm. behind you. I said, okay, all right. But he was right. It's always good to have a master's behind you. That's right. If I say so myself with yeah, my last okay, name. I got it. it didn't <laughs> my head, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's why you wanted back on the show. You got yeah, this master's right. right by your side and all the that, levity from everybody. See? That's right. That's, that's right. It. You that's are it. you are something to uh Jim, you're really something to behold. I'm so glad that you're doing what you do because you got so many people. And this is the truth. Listen to me. You got so many people on TV, got these TV shows now. And what are they doing? I mean, it's just a mess. <laughs> That's all I got to say about it. It's just a mess now. <laughs> you know, but you are doing something constructive. You, you're enlightening people. You are educating people. You are giving people like myself a chance to be themselves and to, to touch your people and other people to, to, to give them a sense of value of what life is really to be like. And not all this madness on, this madness on TV, the TV show. Somebody told me you ought to go on, to, and I'm not going to mention his name. Yeah. But you ought to go on to so and so on the show. I said, "What the fuck?" Because they put me off of that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Because it's because they, they 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 do stupid stuff." Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get into that. Cause right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway, uh, <laughs> yes, that's uh, kind of you. I really appreciate that, Holly. It's very kind of you to say that. Um, means means a great deal because you know you've been doing this. Uh, quite some time. You've had exposure to so many incredible people like Lynn's here. Uh, Lynn uh, Orman, she says, I love the songs Holly did with Curtis Mayfield and the impressions. Oh yeah. Yeah. No one else. And, uh, and uh, the song called suffer, you know, the impressions were the background group behind me with that song. That's, that's historical. That's legendary and iconic. You know, uh, when y'all get there, y'all you know, go to YouTube and find me and go come and hear some of this stuff. <laughs> yes, it's all there. Absolutely. Yeah, you, it's, it's, it, yeah. <clears throat> um, you established the Maxwell Cafe, too. Tell us well, about that. Well, let me tell you what happened with that. Okay. <clears throat> I went to work in Paris. In 1995, I moved there, and the club was called K the Blues, which means back to the blue. And I'm going fast forward. I had been going there for about oh, every year, 95, 96, 97. Anyway, one of those years, the Maxwell House Coffee people came in and said, we want you to write a commercial. I wrote the commercial 
for the coffee company. And then they can turn around, came back, changed the name and gave me a percentage and gave Gerard uh, Bache a percentage. And that's how the Maxwell Cafe came up. That's where it came about was through that, huh? That's, yeah, that's how it came about. Wow. Through the Maxwell House Coffee Company. Wow. Yes. Good to the last drop. Yeah, baby, and that's what I am, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. She's not half a cup. She's a whole cup oh, of coffee. A whole cup. She's a whole cup of coffee. <laughs> that's right. Full busted and robusted. <laughs> <laughs> And when you were there, you were French roast. Yeah, that's right. See what I'm talking about? You know. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. You uh, also had the honor of, and they had the honor of with you, sharing the stage with the Dells, the Temptations, the Spinners, King Curtis, Captain and Tennille, Slappy White, Red Fox. Tell us about some of that. Uh, these are you know, iconic uh, names Red, as well. Red Fox. Oh, uh, yeah. He was, that man was funny. He was, he was, he always kept a, a, a great sense of humor, you know. Do you think he was underrated? Yes. Yeah. You know what, Jim, I have to be honest. A lot of black entertainers are underrated. You know, we, 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 we're some of the greatest talents in the world, but we don't get, we don't get the, 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 the opportunities and the chances, well, back, especially back in, in my time, if you could be Diana Ross and you still ain't going to get the money that uh, Barbara Strassan got. See, I'm just being straight honest. Uh, you could be uh, Aretha, Aretha, but she's not going to get the money Dionne Warwick got. And that's because she was in a different uh, in a different environment, a different ball game. You have to. I hate to. I hate to say this, but it's the truth. If you don't go pop, and if you don't go country, you're gonna be left sitting on the on the on the doorstep somewhere. And that's the truth. Which leads me, which is the segue into letting you know I'm cutting my first country CD now. Yes, that's what I uh, heard, which is kind of incredible, huh? Yeah, well, I want to be the first black senior citizen woman in country music. That's incredible. That's amazing. I think you shall be too. I yeah, think. that's 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 my goal. Those well, three things: the book, the document, and the CD. Those are the three things I'm focusing on now. Lynn says, "I believe Holly will win a Grammy for Best Country Artist." Yep. I'm working on it. Mm. I'm working on it. You know, we I just put out after after three, four decades, a song I can I wrote called Use Your Head. You, did, did you know that? No. This I is... just put that out and it was nominated at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for legendary songwriters and, and the performers. That's incredible, huh? Yeah. The time was right to have it come out now, right? Yeah, yeah. And the and the and we did the song in 1977. Wow. Mm -hmm. So That's I incredible. released it. I released it uh, uh, last year, but I just really, really pushed it this pushed year. Pushed it now. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that on uh, Spotify, Amazon, all yeah, the places, it's on Spotify, music yeah, platforms? Yeah. And yeah, you can go to here, here now, H E A R N O W, here now.com. Cool. And you can see it's on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. All that. <laughs> I like, there's so many, right? Whatever, all that. Just yeah, go. Right. Yeah. yeah, I ain't got, <laughs> babe, I ain't got time to remember all that. <laughs> Before it was just Tower Records. And, right, you know, Now it's so all this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, they got, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but that's why I said go to herenow.com. Herenow.com. And then you'll get all of them. And you can go to any one of them you want to go to. Look at this you're, shot. You're, wow. Yeah, this is yeah. like, this is, what was happening here? Oh, that was uh, Chicago Women in the Blues. No, no. That was Obama's. That was his, uh, uh, the second time he ran. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, a, a um a performance oh, you did? Uh, 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 Blues Mamas for Obama. 
Wow. Ooh. That's what it was. Myself and I think it was 10 other girls. Blues Mamas for a Mama. Very good. Look at that outfit. Fantastic, huh? My mom made the hat. She made that too? My mom made the hat. I made the shawl and the dress. Did she ever go into designing? Did she ever have her own line or any of that? Yeah, well, you know, she used to. Very the talented. Would, the, yeah, the girls would come from Las Vegas and, and go into Atlantic City, right? They would stop in Chicago and get those hairdresses that they mm. wore in Vegas. Yeah. She did all those hairdresses, hairdresses with the feathers and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah, mama did all that. Wow. Yeah, she did all that. She she made suits for Tyrone Davis, Johnny Taylor. Mm. Uh, she made suits for uh, Bobby Bland. She made she made suits for a lot of the guys. Very gifted, huh? Yes, yes, she was. Mm. Look at yes, this shot. Yeah, that's uh, that's Larry with the glasses and the mm -hmm. white cap. He was a club owner. That was for the Chicago Blues. Uh, what do you call it? The Chicago um, uh, Chicago Blues Hall of Fame. Oh, the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the gentleman on the other side of me is uh, W.L. Leonard, who was the first black man to have a TV show on Channel 26 Ooh. back in uh, back in the 60s. Wow, that's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah, so and they were they were inducted into the Chicago Blues Hall of Fame. Are they still with us today? Yep. Oh, that's great. Yep, they're still around, hanging around, worrying me to death. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Yep, that was at the Blues Hall of Fame, and it was done. That was done at Buddy Guys. Wow. That's fantastic, huh? Yeah. These are really uh, iconic memories on, on so many different levels here that we're sharing with our uh, our viewers who are loving this, everybody watching around the world. Look at this. Oh, show. thank you. That picture uh, was taken by Connie, Connie Carroll. Uh, we were at a club called the Motor Roll. And I don't know, I just went into a spiritual mode when she took the picture. Really fantastic. Really. Yeah. She was capturing something that she was seeing yes. happen before her. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Yeah. Thank you. That was uh at uh that was at a club that was done by what is this? Photo by Carol Connie Carroll. She's another one, one yeah. of her photos. Yeah, really. She, 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 and this guy named Peter Hurley. Boy, do they capture me! They capture me. They get me. That that outfit in the red that you mm. liked. Yes, that was done by Peter Hurley. Yeah, that one. They get they get some good shots of me. They're excellent photographers. They really capture you uh, yes. when you're doing your thing. In yes. such an incredible, incredible way, huh? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> That's that picture is uh from Paris, France. That is. Yeah. That is you look very, very happy there. Very I happy. What, if, if I had known what I know now, I wouldn't came back. You I would have stayed. stayed there. Yeah, but I had to come back and take care of my mom. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, being, being the only child, no yeah. brothers, no sisters. I had to come back. So you came back. Look yeah. at this. Yep, my mom made that dress. Incredible. Yeah. When and was this? This seventies, right? This one. Yeah, that's in the seventies. Oh, might have been the early eighties. That's a blues singer named Artie Blues Boy White. Uh, he's gone on. And this is in the back, Joe Pratt. Joe Pratt is still with us. They have a band now called, uh, oh, I can't think of what they call, but anyway, Joe Pratt. Joe Pratt is a hell of a bass player, excellent bass player. Really incredible, huh? Yes, yes, yeah. Mm. That's a great shot. Yeah, you got some pictures. Where'd you, where'd you get on? I do my homework. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes, you do. It's now, this shot was done by Peter Hurley. Very nice. Yep. Yeah. 
Again, look at your smile. You just look like you're in your element. You're very, very happy. Yeah, I am. I, I'm, 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 I'm very, very happy when I'm doing the music. When I'm yeah. in my music, that's my that's my world. That this is, is cool. World. Very exotic shot. Wow. Yeah, I might have been saying, God bless the child. He's got his own on there. Yeah, That's probably what I was saying. Yes. Get you there. That was, great probably, one. That was probably because of somebody else. <laughs> I was gonna say, "Hey, you! Uh, <laughs> hey, you! Are you the one that just stepped on my foot?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my I god! I told you it's Holly with the E. <laughs> right. and it's the, not the. <laughs> right. That's right. Look That's absolutely you. you're, right. You're you're really in your element here, huh? Yeah, that was. Uh, that was a party for an attorney, uh, J.B. Ross. Very he was, nice. He was an entertainment attorney. He's not with us either. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that! Wow. Oh yeah, that's that's my that's my that's my that's my dominatrix song. Yeah, I was gonna say. That's a, that's gold finger. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> No, it's called Wake Up Daddy. Your mama needs a morning meal. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, yes. Now, I, I, if I saw that, I would believe that. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I used, to, I used to have a whip I bought on stage, you know, Jane? Oh, did you? Yeah, and I'd go, Pow! Wake Up Daddy. <laughs> you know, mama with them. <laughs> I stopped there because the man, the man jumped up, snatched the whip, and ran out the door. <laughs> and Everybody the other two guys in the act. front row would spill their drinks on themselves. <laughs> they would get startled. <laughs> oh my God. Did I just hear a whip? Yes, well, that man grabbed that man grabbed that whip and ran out the door. Hear me. Really? <laughs> yes, he did. Everybody thought it was part of the act. It was part of the I act. Was just as shocked as they were. <laughs> and now he sold it for a hundred thousand dollars on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Holly was oh. singing "God Bless the Child" and brought people to tears with that red outfit. She, they were, uh, Lynn remembers what you were singing. God bless the child. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's incredible. That's yes. really, this is always a great one too. Such a cool look, the hair, everything. Well, you know what I was in the frame of mind of? Marilyn Monroe. Yes. That's what I was in the frame of mind. That picture was taken by uh, a young photographer. His name is Torrance Smith. Well, you've, you've been referred to many, many times, and it's not something I made up, the original Black Bombshell, right? That's that's right. what you had dubbed uh, a while ago and, and still holds true, right? That's amazing. Yeah. You know? Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that kind of stuck with me, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, it sure did. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. It did. It just stuck. Just you know, I can't. I can't even wear different color hair now. Oh, it's your in. This is yeah. This, this you're is locked. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is it. I'm. I'm. I'm locked your, in. Now. Your card. Your card is punched in on this one. Yes. 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 Why do you love when you look back? Like you said, seven decades, which is so hard to believe. Um, what are some of those moments that stand out for you? Some of those moments that really uh, have been true blessings for you? Oh, man. Oh, you know what, uh, Jim? So many, so many things I'm grateful for. You know, uh, it's, it's, number one, I'm grateful for every, every person that I've touched and that has touched me. I'm grateful for that. Be it good, bad, indifferent, whatever. I'm just grateful for that because I learned something each time from each individual. I don't care who it is. I learned something that 
that that makes me wiser and makes me more tolerant and more understanding. And when you have when you've lived to sing for seven decades and perform, it's all a blessing. Jim, it's all a blessing. It really is. I can't say one thing is better than the other thing. I can't say that that uh, meeting President Franco was better than me being around A. Turner. I'm just I'm just grateful for all of it. I think that because, in fact, I know that because I knew I could sing. You tell me I couldn't sing. I might be I might get beat up, but you're gonna be in a fight, hear me? Yes. Right. <laughs> Exactly. So me knowing that everything, I'm grateful for it all, honey. Mm -hmm. I, I really am. I, I, I have no complaints. Cool stuff, huh? A lot of blessings and joy. Yeah, yeah. I have no, I have no complaints. You've if, enjoyed if, the ride. If, yes. Yes. If, if, if I pass, if I pass, and this is true, if I pass away tomorrow, I don't have any regrets. It was like I did everything that I was to do in order to come to this point where I am now. I was even, I was even homeless. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people don't know. I was even homeless, eating out of garbage cans. But I'm, I, I came through that. Here I am. And I'm, I, all I can say is, I know I'm a wonderful person. <laughs> you know, I know this. I don't regret. I, there's nothing I regret doing. How many people can say that? A lot of people can't say that, right? They, I, they... I don't, I'm not looking over my shoulder. I haven't done anybody wrong. I haven't uh, been malicious. Or I don't hold malice. I don't. Uh, I don't have revenge in my heart. I don't. I, I. I. I just. I just know I'm a special individual, and I just thank God. And if I don't see tomorrow, I want you to know, baby, I done lived, and I love the life I've lived, and I have no regrets, Jim. That's beautiful to be able to say that because not a lot of people are able to to look back. A lot of people have regrets. So oh, I should have. Why didn't I? I should have taken the risk. Why didn't Why didn't I listen to my heart instead of what everybody else was telling me? You know, because a lot of people will tell you what you should be doing and how you should be living and all the rest. And uh, no, no, you got to carve your own path out and live what your heart and soul is telling you. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm not saying that I didn't make mistakes, but I'm saying the mistakes I made were good for me. I don't have any regrets. If, if Whatever mistake I made, that's what I was supposed to do so that I could be stronger and wiser and, again, more loving. And that's why I feel like if, if, I, if I drop dead tomorrow, I don't, I don't have no regrets, none. Which is so incredibly, you know, amazing on so many different levels. What are some things that you still want to do? Seven decades of pouring out your heart and soul and all this great music. What what are some things that you still would love to do? Got the documentary, book, the, things Yeah, of that those nature. three things, those three things I'm I'm working on. But you know what I would love to do? I would love to go to Africa, back to Africa. I've been there, you know, before. But I would love to go back to Africa and then go to Paris, and, and that's where I want to drop dead at. Paris? Yeah. Yeah. You mean punch out at? Yeah, yeah punch <laughs> out, punch in to punch out. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, punch in to punch out. Right. That's what I'm talking about. That's what it is. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, all full yeah. circle, right? I don't have too much that I really want to do. I have the oh, I, I I also have an organization called Black Musicians Matter. And uh, this summer I want to do some concerts and hire the musicians, you know, to do some some concerts for the community and stuff. But I'm gonna have to uh, and I'm telling everybody now, I'm going to have to do a GoFundMe. I'm going to need help to get it done. But that's that's what I want to do for this summer. That's fantastic. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Black that's Musicians cool. Matters. I've got the I've got the T-shirts. I should have had one here since I was going to mention it. Yeah. But anyway. Um, Will they, yeah. they be able to get them through your uh, website as well? Yeah. Yeah. You can get them through the website. Yes. yes Holly Lee Maxwell dot love right Isn't that incredible that's amazing first time i ever heard of dot love that's so cool you got that and that guess what that see i'm telling you see? <laughs> guess what? she, what she it, makes what? things happen she moves mountains what she's a trendsetter <laughs> <laughs> she's the first this that and dot love <laughs> that's right and dot love because that's it you know love everything is. that i do it has to do with love it does yeah. yes that's my motivation yeah love so i guess that when that came up i said there it is right there i want that you know instead of the dot org and dot com and the, the dot love. yeah that's incredible that's fantastic hmm. so um how's your voice today good you're uh it's, it's it's coming around yeah it is right it's coming around i can't i can't hit the notes that i used to hit yeah Okay, but what I'm learning to do is I'm learning to lower the keys on my songs. Right. Uh-huh. And 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 I'm not trying to sing pretty no more. I'm talking in tune. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. But, but you going country, you ain't got to hit a bunch of high notes, just talk in tune, give it the rhythm and tell the story and tell the story. That's it. Exactly. That's it. That's where I'm going, it's country. Have you, uh, how about songwriting as well? Yeah, I'm doing that. You're doing that too. Oh, Jim, I got so many oh. songs, baby. But, oh, you can't, yeah, yeah, I got a book. Let's talk. Wow, of all these songs, huh? All songs, yeah. It's this, that the world has not heard yet. They haven't heard it yet, no. Mm -mm, I, I do a lot of writing, you know, my feelings, what I do. Uh, that's That's another thing that has sustained me being able to write if i feel hurt or if i feel unloved or if i feel loved or whatever it is i feel i have an ability to go and write that down in words and make it rhyme and make it make sense i have that ability but i have not i've not opened up with the songs yet because so people so many people steal from you Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, yeah, and if you really don't know what you're doing now, you don't have anybody that you could trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, 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 boy, look here, you, you, you gonna be out there homeless again, girl. So, I've been like just kind of just, you know, just paying attention and listening and learning, and uh, this country CD is gonna do it. Mm. That's incredible. Yeah. Do you have a target of when you hope it'll come out? Nope. You're still working on it. And when it's right, that's when it'll be out. Right. That's it. Mm. That's that's it. That's it. We'll stay I, tuned for that. Yeah. Keep us posted so we can let oh, everybody know. I will. You know, maybe no, we have you, we'll have you back and you can sing a little of it for yeah, us. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to keep you posted. In yeah. fact, I'm going to worry you to death. <laughs> what you talking about willis <laughs> jim i need more lovity i need i need a i need a masters behind me <laughs> oh, no. See talking about that's right that's right my daddy that said get that you get that masters i said okay and here you are huh yes, uh -huh. <laughs> all these years later here we are <laughs> See, your daddy is a smart man. But baby, yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Always have a master's nearby. That's and, right. And you'll be in good hands. <laughs> That's right. 
You know who knows that well is our friend George Burns, who's back to say hello. There he is. Hey, George. With his his cigar and his red hanky. Of course, uh, my aunt collected dolls and he got passed down to me. She was a big collector of very expensive dolls, had a whole room filled with all these dolls. And George is here, sends his love to you. He played God in the movies too. Remember the old God movies? Yeah, the old God, so yes. He yes, sends you his love from Thank one, you. one icon to the next. Thank you, Georgie Porgy. I tell you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so you're loving life. You're in a sweet spot right now. Yes, yes, like, I am. Yeah, yeah. Things, are, things are good. Um, that's fantastic. I'm so happy to hear all that. You know, you're you're full of energy. You're full of love, uh, heart, soul. You like to have a good time, you know, and uh, you don't take it too seriously, but yet you're focused, which is very important. And I think that's just amazing. Kathleen yeah. in New York City says, it's so nice to see you here again, Holly. Such a, a wonderful spirit. May you continue to be blessed and she's in new york city maureen in arizona says you holly are a beautiful soul we're so lucky to have been part of this conversation may god continue to bless you in this life really thank nice you. from some of our viewers uh, commenting thank here huh me. thank you i really you know, appreciate uh, that uh, jim if we, can i give a shout out to some some people sure absolutely i want to say i want to shout out to uh, Jacqueline Shedrick. Uh, I, I, the reason why I'm doing that because I love it because he takes care of his mom and his dad. That's nice. So I'm 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 letting him know that I really appreciate him for being like that with him. Uh, uh, I want to shout out to Lynn Lynn Orman. She's the one that was. She's the one that was Lynn's uh, she, commenting she, and yes, yes, yeah, she, yeah, she baby, she need a medal. <laughs> she needs she, a medal. She, me to put she knows up. the story, right? <laughs> yes, she, she, she agreed knows. with me. She says French roast, robust. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she knows the whole story. Hear me. And I want to say, uh, I want to shout out to Nina and to Layla and to AJ. They're over at the Royal Car Center. And let me tell you this story because it's the true story. Uh, but you know, I was married to a gentleman that died at 101 years old. Mm. And um, when he died, uh, it kind of left me in a predicament because he bought me a, a red Denali truck because he Ooh. wanted me to have no. Uh-huh. And when he died, the notes were so high. <laughs> okay. And these people that we got the car from, uh, Layla, AJ, and Nina, and I want to say, hey, TJ, too. They came and they got me and made me their secretary. Wow. So that so that it would help me to continue on uh, with, the, with the car notes. I just want, see, that's what I'm telling you about how blessed I am. Absolutely right. You, you understand this woman didn't know me from 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 Adam's hat hat. What you call it? House cat. Right. And and uh, they came along and they they uh, made sure I didn't fall. That's what I'm saying to you. So I'm 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 giving them a shout out at Royal Car Center. That's beautiful. Seven three zero one Southwest, and I have to say that. <laughs> 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 tell him Holly D sent you. <laughs> yes, tell him Holly D sent you. That's it. <laughs> and and I give a shout out to a friend of mine. I think he, I, I really think he he he's a little jealous, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, you have to have one of them in your life. Yes, I want to give him a shout out. That's money. Toes. Yeah, money of the love movement. Guess what? You all right with me, baby? Guess what? Whatever you be going through, I don't, that's on you. You all right with me? <laughs> See? Okay, so that's what it's all about, right? Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Next time uh, when the piano is tuned, we'll have you walk over to the piano and play that. Yeah, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about, Willie? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, next time I'm, I'm going to set up my own piano. That's what I'll You'll do. set up your own. Yeah. <laughs> The, the one behind you goes back in the morning, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't pay the, the note truck comes on to that. get it in the morning. I didn't pay the note on that. <laughs> pay the they note ready, or play a note. They're getting ready to repossess that sucker. They're going to repossess that. <laughs> that is funny. That is amazing. You're oh, the best, man. my friend. Really, truly. Um, this was really fantastic. I, I, as I always say, we're going to keep the porch light on for you. You are welcome back anytime. Continue to spread the word about the Jim Masters show live okay. series. It takes a village and, uh, you may know other folks you think would like to pop on as guests. They're all welcome. And, uh, I hope you, uh, enjoy the time with me again, as much as I have with your return visit to Lovety Hall and the Jim Masters Show, Holly the Masvall. I well. love you, and I love all the loveties, and I thank you so much for all of your warmth and your kindness and your encouragement. I thank you. Ah, uh, the pleasure is all mine. Iconic, incredible, and uh, heart-centric and soul-filled. Holly the Maxwell here on the Jim Masters Show Live. We love you, Holly the. You be well. You take care, and keep laughing, smiling, and singing for all of us. Okay. All the time. All right. We'll talk again soon. You be well. All right. All right. Love you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. The one and only, the iconic Holly Lee Maxwell here on the Jim Masters Show Live Series. Stopping by with her vim, her vigor, her spirit, her heart, her soul, and her incredible sense of humor. Unreal, you know? And uh, next time she's here, we'll maybe have her sing a little bit. But we wanted to update. We wanted to catch up. She was here uh, when not far after when we first started the Jim Masters Show Live series, almost 900 episodes ago, wow. she was uh, one of our earlier guests, and uh, we were chatting. And she said, "I, you know, I want to come back on the show. I, I want some more levity, and I want to update you on all the cool things I'm working on." She got that other book coming out, the documentary, country music. Wow, that's a fabulous new venue for her as well. So she shared. Lots of levity, lots of great spirit, good vibes, a great message for everybody too. If you're going through something and you need some positive vibes as well. She was also very open and real about her life and her experiences, the good, the bad, the ups, the downs, but here she is still a trailblazer and truly a, an American treasure and a music icon on many different levels. I mean, she's been with some of the most incredible artists, groups shared the stage, uh, you know, headlined herself. I mean, it's just really amazing when you think about it. And she's talking seven decades uh, and continuing to still do it. As you guys always hear me say to some folks who are guests, special guests on the Jim Master Show, I always say, you know, you've done what you've done for so long for the benefit of all of us. You could easily have your feet in the sand in Miami and South Beach, swaying in a hammock with a banana colada in your hand. But uh, Holly Lee is still out there doing her thing. She still wants, she's got a voice. She's got a story to tell. She's got a message in her music. And she wants people to, uh, to feel it, not just hear it, but to feel it and live it. And that's really cool. That's something very, very special. So with all the accolades and all the awards and all the songs and all the groups she's been a part of and everything else, um, she still is. She's still Holly Lee Maxwell. She's still that same spirited, heart-centric person, which I think is so, so fantastic and oftentimes rare in these industries of ours, you know, a lot of people become very jaded. A lot of people become all about themselves. I mean, she loves to kids. She's all about me. You know, she, she, uh, you know, you got to love yourself, but she also, uh, is a very empathetic, compassionate, caring person as well. And you can hear that in her voice and you can hear it in her words. Um, and that's a beautiful thing. So yeah, she, uh, we, we chatted with each other and she wanted to be back on the show and, uh, I said, absolutely, you can come back and uh, we put it together. And, and Maureen is already putting in her order. She goes, uh, Maureen in Arizona, please come back for round three in Lovety Hall soon, Holly. Yes, she'll be back again. She's got that country music and all these other cool things happening as well. 
And welcome to all of our new viewers and new subscribers. We really appreciate that. Thanks for subscribing to our YouTube channel. Make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss any of our episodes. You get alerts. Uh, what a fun show and guest. Thank you, Jim from Kathleen in New York City. Jane says, what a fun and lovely guest. You are truly a great person. Thanks for being here tonight, Holly. Thank you, Jim. Pleasure is all mine as well. We had such an extraordinary conversation and lots of levity and, and just good times. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know. Drop a comment. Leave a comment in the comments section or YouTube channel. And give a thumbs up like if you enjoyed this episode. There's a big thumbs up icon right there by the episode. Give a thumbs up. Drop a comment in the comments section. Subscribe to the channel and uh, give us some levity. Tell your friends. Don't keep it a secret. Tell your friends about the Gym Master Show Live series. We thank our very special guest for her return engagement. Special guest, Holly Lee Maxwell, iconic singer, vocalist, the original Black Bombshell, right here on the Gym Master Show Live series. All, also want to let you know we have another iconic, iconic person tomorrow. Now, tomorrow being Valentine's Day, uh, we have the one and only, you've seen him on PBS. He's been on PBS for decades. He's been with Julia Child. He's authored 30 cookbooks. He's one of the world's most well-known and beloved chefs, French chef, Jacques Pepin, the one and only. You've seen him for decades on television, on PBS, all of his books. He's everywhere. He's extraordinary, iconic chef, television personality, cookbook author, culinary educator and instructor, and artist. He is going to be joining us. He'll be at his beautiful home, which is along the Connecticut coast. And uh, he's joining me exclusively tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. It's a special time, 2 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Central, and that will be 11 a.m. Pacific. This is going to be something special. He is, again, one of the most beloved and revered chefs, not only in America, but around the world. And uh, to have Jacques Pepin stopping by the Gym Master Show live series, it is quite a treat, quite an honor. I interviewed him on PBS on public television over the years, number of times, and we saw each other recently, and uh, we put it together to have him come on the show. He'll be here tomorrow on Valentine's Day. Again, a special time, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1 p.m. Central, and 11 a.m. Pacific. Join us live. If you miss it live, it'll be archived, but he's going to be here, and it is a treat. Again, you, everybody knows Jacques Pepin. He's one of the greatest, and he's such a nice guy. Really, really is. Coming up this week as well, we've got critically acclaimed singer and songwriter Rebecca Folsom joining us as well. Uh, check that out. She's extraordinary. She has a new album out. Recently, we also did uh, Jim Masters show tributes, remembering Lisa Marie Presley and also recently Cindy Williams, the iconic Cindy Williams from Laverne and Shirley. And we had Tracy Reiner on the show, uh, Penny Marshall's daughter. Penny Marshall played Laverne on Laverne and Shirley. We had several other amazing guests. If you didn't see that episode, check it out. And all the other episodes of our incredible series uh, that we've done for, we're coming up on almost three years now and like late March, early April will be almost three years. It's the Jim Masters Show live series. Thanks for all the great comments and uh, thank you, Kathleen in New York City for the comments as well. And whether you're watching live or you watch these episodes later, we truly appreciate your being with us. It means a great deal. Don't keep it a secret. Tell everybody you know that you enjoy our series. We really appreciate that. We'll see you again. Again, Jacques Pepin will be here with us tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern, if you're watching live. And uh, we hope you can join us. We'll see you right here on the show. Don't forget, we don't say goodbye around here. We say, see you later. Ciao, cheers, slancha, moi lu, hasta la vista, buenas noches. Uh, let's see. We say shalom. We say sayonara. He, we, <laughs> we say a lot of things. Slancha, cheerio. Take care and be well. We love you all. We'll see you on the next episode of the Gym Master Show. I'll be right here waiting for you. Take care and be well. Love you. Cheers. <laughs>